And a good afternoon to you, sir. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? Oh, we're doing outstanding, man. Uh, uh, so many places we could go with you. I would love to start uh, for with your thoughts on you know what it was like uh, uh, playing for and coaching with Tom Landry back in the '60s all the way until the early '80s. What can you share with us about that experience, Mike? Uh, the greatest man I've ever met was Tom Landry. I say that uh, say my my father, of course, but. Uh, Outside of that, I had a great high school coach, but Tom Landry, uh, he was special. He was uh, a great Christian man, but he, uh, he was a great football man. And uh, he really uh, he saved my career. He uh, took a chance on me, and then he uh, he played me when I got to Dallas and uh, had a wonderful career in Dallas with the Cowboys. And not only a player, but an assistant coach. And, uh, and because of him, uh, he's the one that talked to Mr. Allison. He's the one that told him, I will tell you to coach. So... I got the parents out because of him. I would love to hear your thoughts on I think it's really fun when we talk to guys like Michael Irvin. And in today's NFL, if players go out, if players party, we find out. Social media is out there, and Michael Irvin's told us, like, we wouldn't have made it, the 90s Cowboys, in the social media world. What was it like on, say, the 1970s Cowboys, the early 70s? Was If social media was around, would you guys have been in the news? Well... There was no shortage of fun down in Dallas, believe me. <laughs> we had a great group of guys, but we had a lot of fun. And did we party a little bit? Yeah, we probably partied a little bit too much, but uh, it was uh, it was nothing that was uh, harmful to the football team. You know, it was just uh, things that we did. And uh, I, I, I'm, I'm very, very elated with the time I got to spend in Dallas with the Cowboys for the first time. So, I mean, it, it, it's been a, it, it was a great time for me. My life changed when I met uh, Tom Brown. Really, I never met a man like him. He was, uh, he's the real deal. He was, uh, uh, and no matter what people said, you know, personality, he had, he had a great personality. We had so much fun uh, laughing with him when we were in meetings and things like that. People never got to see that side of him. They just got to see the quiet man on the sideline, but uh, he was special. Do you got? Do you think that uh, guys, the coaches like uh, him and you, would have success in this era of the NFL? As you look at what the game has has become, how do you like your your shot of uh, having all that success in in the twenty uh, first century NFL? Well, I, I think it all depends on a lot of things. But first of all, you got to have the players. Uh, the, the first thing we did when we got to Dallas or to Chicago is we changed a lot of things. We got rid of all the so called guys who were supposed to be there, and we brought in guys who wanted to play for the Bears and wanted to play for me. And, uh, and it worked out good. We had a good group of guys. I mean, uh, you know, uh, no, nobody thought that man was special. Every week, man was very special. Uh, you know, we had, uh, of course, the greatest running back in the history of the game in Walter Payton. Uh, we had a very, very good offensive line. And our defense maybe, maybe was as good as a defense that ever played the game. Coach, I, I just want to say something to you about your restaurants. The greatest pot roast I ever had in my life was in your restaurant in Chicago there. And I'll yeah, tell you we, what, you, you do a hell of a job with your restaurants. And I, But I had, a, I had a choice, Coach. I went for the pot roast, but I, I wanted to go for the pork chop or the bone-in ribeye. Which one should I have taken there? I, I, was, I was looking at that dick of pork chop thinking that was going to be pretty strong. You couldn't have went wrong with either one, but I'll tell you what, uh, uh, the pork chop was our specialty dish, and it was special. But uh, the only rib I thought was good too. And we had a good run with the restaurant. So it, it was pretty good, about right good. It's Mike Ditka here with you on 105.3 The Fan. Mike, what's the last time you talked to Jim McMahon? Uh, I, I haven't seen him for a while, but I, but it, it, it hasn't been that long. It was probably me, probably a couple months, but that's all. But I mean. Uh, Jim's a good guy, you know. I mean, he did, you know, I mean, the image that he had was not truly true not who the guy was. The guy was a much, uh, he, he was the reason we won. I don't care what people say. We had uh, one of the main reasons. We had Walter Payton, greatest running back, but uh, Jim was a quarterback who knew how to take care of the ball, and he made the people around him better. At what point with those Bears in 85 did you know it was all coming together with McMahon at quarterback and that? that great defense that you knew it was going to be a team of destiny? Well, that defense was pretty good, guys. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, I, I can only say what, what I knew. I knew we had a great defense. 
I knew the buddy line would have those guys ready to play every week. Like the you know, the offense, people don't realize that we we led the league in rushing, we led the league in time of possession, we led the league in first down. So we did a lot of good things. So uh, so we 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 had a good football team all around, and we had good special teams, which you have to have in football. Yeah, you sure did, Coach. I, I was going to ask you when you watch the game today, Coach, and you see how productive all these tight ends are. Yeah, it's kind of kind of. Kind of crazy though that uh, how the, the the tight end has evolved over the years, right? Well, you know the tight end position now uh, was just the guy on the end. That, you know, when I first started playing the position, uh, we had a, we had an offensive coach named oh, I can't think of her name even right now. But uh, when I came to the Bears, the tight end was just a guy who lined up beside the tackle and blocked. And uh, he said, "We're going to do more with the position." We're going to throw the football to you. Now, you got to realize, guys, my senior year in college, I caught 15 or 16 passes. <laughs> year in football, I caught 60 some. So it, it was crazy. I had a, a coach, uh, Luke Johnson, who uh, really believed in me, and he really helped me uh, learn how to run the routes and do the things I had to do. Blocking was never a problem. I loved to block. Probably caught a lot more passes in the basketball court in your college career. Yeah, well, my claim, my claim to fame in basketball is uh, I get in, I got to cover, cover uh, Jerry West, and uh, I think I covered him for about, uh, oh, maybe 10 minutes and five fouls, and he had about 18 <laughs> points. But it was, and he said, thank God he fouled out. I, never, I might have never had a pro career, but I, I was a hatchet man. <laughs> Yeah, hatchet man, sound like the man for the job. If you ask me, it's Mike Ditko here with you on your home of the Cowboys, one hundred five through the fan. Who's going to win this Super Bowl, Mike? Who do you like, Tampa or KC? I tell you, you got two good teams, two two really good coaches. That guys, I don't know. I, I I just hope it's a great game. I hope it lives up to the what they've been all year. These are these really are the two best teams in the league. You can say whatever you want to say. There's some other good teams, but these are the two best. Uh, I don't know. I mean, Mahomes is he's a special player. He makes people around him better, and that and that's the key. But I mean, you're talking about uh, hey, I, you know, you're talking about one of the greatest quarterbacks in the history of the game in Brady. So I mean, it, it's going to be interesting. Okay, if you could only have one quarterback to start a team with any era, who you going with? In this era, right now? Any era? Any? Well. <laughs> You know, I, I don't know. I, I, I played against Johnny Unitas, and I played against a lot of the truly great ones in the game. Uh, I, I think the guy, the best compliments your team. I mean, I mean, McMahon was a different kind of guy, but he was the right guy for us. You know what I mean? He, uh, he was actually a much better leader than people thought he was. You know, he just liked to make me mad at what he liked to do, <laughs> and uh, he did a good job of it. But. Uh, Again, you know, I wouldn't have rather had anybody than him that when we were uh, had that run because he, he was he was good. But you got to realize we had a we had a defense of second and none. Uh, we we had a running game with Walter Payton that was second and none. So whatever we we could do, we could hardly screw up because if we just ran the ball and played defense, we were going to be in the game. Hey, Coach, when you, you you talk about your Super Bowl victory there with the Bears. You know, it, the, the game was played in New Orleans, though. Were you worried your team was your team liked to have a lot of fun? Uh, were you worried about curfews and stuff like that, or did you just let your your guys be their guys? Oh, we had curfews, but I, I knew I knew the team and I knew what they would do. Uh, I said, I don't care what you guys do up until Thursday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. You want to be in your room? We're going to fetch check, do that, and they did. They got they they got all the stuff out of them in the first couple of days down there. And then, uh, then it was just, uh, it was all business after that. And I mean, really it was. It, our practices were very, very, uh, it was all business. So, I mean, I'm, I'm very proud of that football team. Uh, those guys, uh, they were leaders in themselves. I mean, we had guys like Singletary and, uh, Peyton and, you know, th- those guys were special. I mean, you don't find guys like that. They were leaders who were respected by their teammates and, uh, who were capable of leading our football team. And they did. Mike, what's it going to take for the Cowboys to get back to this spot, a place they have not been now for 25 years? 
Well, you know, I, again, you know, I I wouldn't, I, I don't tell anybody how, how they do things. I think the main thing you do is you hire a good coach and you let him coach. You put him in a position by drafting the kind of people that he wants. Uh, not, not the most popular people, but the people that he needs to make his team better, whether it be an offensive lineman or a defensive lineman or whatever. I mean, if you look at the way the Cowboys drafted when Coach Landry was there, they drafted a lot of linemen, a lot of defensive people, and they became key players in that run that the Cowboys had for all those years. So, I mean, I I, uh, I, I, I think back to, um, what, you know, I, I, of course the meetings I had when I was coaching with the Cowboys as an assistant coach, and he didn't leave any stone unturned. And he found out everything he, that he could find out about a player that he wanted to bring in. And he brought in good people. Yeah, every once in a while we'd get a guy that would maybe screw up. But in overall, if you look at what the Cowboys drafted when Landry was there, it was awfully solid. Coach, is there anything crazier in your career than having Saturday Night Live skits with your name all over them? Well, you know, people got to pick uh, – they got to kick out of that stuff. I mean, I, uh, I, I, I never got too caught up in any of it. I really didn't. Uh, but uh, – People had fun with it. Let them have fun with it. I mean, fun of my expense I didn't, didn't bother me any. I knew who I was, and I knew what we were trying to do. The main thing we were trying to do was win football games in Chicago, and we won them. You did a great job, uh, Mike. Anything else before we let you go? Nope, but thank you, guys. God bless, and I love Dallas.